So I'm, it's, I'm delighted and very excited for um, our introduction now that I may make of Jelena Kovacevic, who is in 165 years of what is now called NYU Tandon School of Engineering, is the first woman dean of that organization and a very accomplished one indeed. Uh, she is the William Berkeley Professor and Dean of the Tandon School of Engineering and has garnered numerous accolades, including being included in the city and state higher education Power 50, Tech Power 50, 50 over 50, Crane's notable women in tech rankings, appointed to the American Society for Engineering Education, Engineering Dean's Council Executive Board, and um, where she provides vision and leadership on engineering research, education, and engagement. She has a PhD from Columbia University, worked at Bell Labs, followed by Carnegie Mellon University, where she was a professor and head of the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering and a professor of biomedical engineering. Uh, she has received the IEEE Signal Processing Society Technical Achievement Award, Dow Fellowship at CMU, a Belgrade October Prize, and other fabulous things that are in her bio. I just say, wow, and we're delighted to have you, and thank you for sharing your time with us. Thank you. Good, good afternoon, everybody. I don't want to stand in, in between you and food, so feel free to, you know, get up and... Uh, get some food. First of all, it's super exciting just to look over this room um, and look this amazing, uh, smart, intelligent women. Um, I want to start with a few numbers. I'm an engineer after all, and I believe uh, metrics are important. Uh, I'm just going to give you numbers and then tell you what they mean. 14% uh, versus 47% and 25 versus 47. That is to say that women make up 47% of the overall workforce, and they represent just 14% of the engineering workforce. Adding computer science to the mix does not really improve the numbers very much. Um, together, women engineers and computer scientists uh, comprise only a quarter of those professions. Um, that's clearly not good, right? Because there's many more of us who are smart and capable, as the panelists said, not shy and able to, you know, go out there and, and do these things. So how can we sit back and accept these numbers? And before I uh, answer this last question and tell you what we have done in the school, um, let me offer you two more, 23% versus 46%. In 2009, uh, women made up 23% of the incoming class at what was then called the NYU Polytechnic School of Engineering, which was later renamed Tandon. Um, today, I'm proud to tell you that our incoming class, so first year women, we have 46% women. I would really like to get to 51, just once in our <laughs> lifetime, to see in engineering and STEM, well, let's see. And, and it's a steady upward trajectory um, in the last four years, went to 36, 41, 43, and now 46. So don't let anybody tell you that it's easier to get in or that we must have lowered our standards. The class of 2023 is not, not only includes the largest cohort of women students in our history, it is among the strongest classes academically that we have ever had in terms of any metric you want, SAT scores and so on. So from 2009 to today, um, our school has shot up in the rankings um, from number 80 to number 40, and maybe compared to the law school, 40 doesn't sound so great. Um, it is an amazing transformational story. No other school has ever done this. Uh, our research dollars quintupled from 10 million to more than 50 million. And we have established world famous research centers, Center for Cybersecurity being one of them, NYU Wireless, where the origins of 5G uh, uh, exist and people are now talking and working on 6G. Communications, AR and VR, uh, we have also forged very strong collaborations with our sister schools at NYU through joint grants, various programs, and centers like the Center for Cybersecurity. And we really take very seriously our mission to create a pipeline that leads to gender equity in STEM. 
We want women who make up half the world's population to have the education and opportunity to hold at least half of the world's STEM-related jobs, and how do you actually do it? Um, I really can't take credit for any of this. I started here a year ago, but I'm very proud of what people have done and I'm committed to continuing that. And so there was a four-step plan, and while it may sound easy, it has taken the commitment of my predecessor, Dean, Dean Srini, to our faculty, to our current students, and let me just tell you what these four steps are. The first one is, in order to go to STEM, you must be encouraged to participate to, in, in STEM at an early age. I myself went into engineering, not because I knew anything about engineering, because I love math. And I love math since I was, you know, it's the first thing I remember. Since I was a little kid, that's all I did. I played with numbers and patterns and games and so on. But I also had lots of encouragement in my household. This was considered to be great and normal and, you know, a girl who was into this was a really cool thing. So you can't make an educated decision about, you know, what you want to study without some knowledge and exposure to what that is. And that has to come from not only how you do those things, but actually what impact those things will have. And I think engineering, computer science, STEM in general, we don't really do a great job of answering the why question. Why would you do, you know, go there and what you can do with this? We really concentrate on things that are fun for us, which is the how. How do I do these things? How do I solve these problems? And why is important if you are to encourage young people, both men and women, but women especially, who seem to, you know, there is research that show that women react more to a direct connection to a societal impact, something that, you know, you know will have a benefit to people around you. That's why, uh, you know, a large number of women go to biomedical engineering and they go to environmental engineering. But when you say, talk about, let's say, my field, you know, electrical engineering and, and electrical and computer engineering or computer science, you really have to explain what is it that we can do um, that's really exciting. And so we have a, a center for K through 12 STEM education that offers a variety of programs, such as computer science for cybersecurity. It's a free three-week program that introduces a group of, of you know, that last summer was 80% of whom were women. Uh, to the in-demand fields of cybersecurity, provides mentorship and inspiration from women who are in STEM like you, and gathers a supportive cohort of peers. Our center for K-12 center is one of the largest in the country, and I just heard an amazing statistic that we not only have educational programs for kids uh, as the one I described, but we also have those where we put them in our research labs. And our program last year was all second only to the American Museum of Natural History of how many kids went through this program over the summer. We also educate teachers with the goal of reaching out up to 50,000 New York City school kids through educating 500 teachers. So both kids, teachers, and through teachers kind of as multipliers going out there and exciting other kids. In all our programs, and we have 10 of them for middle and high school kids, more than 50% are women. Uh, we partner as tutors and mentors. Uh, the CISO that's run by the Center for Cybersecurity, the most comprehensive student-run cybersecurity competition, uh, which we have hosted at NYU Tandon for over a decade, and it's now international, uh, happens in other countries, other countries. This year had participation from two all-girl teams, which was very exciting. The second step is then Okay, so you excite them, you show them what these fields are, then you say, have to recruit and enroll women students. So twice a year, we call Tendon West, so for women in STEM, an event for prospective and newly admitted students to allow them to learn about the accomplishments of our women faculty and, and students both at Tendon and at uh, NYU writ large. At West Fest, accepted women gathered uh, over the summer to meet others in their cohort and connect with campus resources. And we hold regular Facebook Live events to address questions for 
from uh, prospective women students about opportunities here uh, you know, in Brooklyn and at NYU. The third step is, okay, so now you have numbers coming in. That's not enough because if the atmosphere and environment is not supportive, they will leave. So you have to incre in, uh, create an inclusive and welcoming environment in which every student can thrive, but you know, we are talking here about women. Women students, for example, can uh, choose to live in our women attendant explorations community, which is in a dedicated floor in our residence hall. And it's really interesting, last year when I went to, to welcome them, so I went from floor to floor. So the, I'm, I'm sorry for the guys, I love you all, but still. On the floors where there were you know, mostly guys, they had their doors closed or open, but they were sitting with their phones on their beds. Nobody was out. I came to the women's floor and there was like 40 women who you know, gathered today. They were already deciding how they're gonna organize everything. They were so excited that I was there, so it was just a totally different vibe, right? <laughs> so hopefully we can do something like this for the guys as well. I mean, they have to be willing participants. Um, our student clubs include the Society of Women Engineers, Feminists, and Women in Business and Entrepreneurship. We strongly welcome and encourage men in our community to help us out because this is not you know, women for women. This is everybody for everybody else and we have what's called male allies. And I'm always amused and really excited when I, at our faculty meetings, the women attendant committee usually starts by a man presenting which is the male allies as part of women attendant committee. So that's great. We hold an annual Women in STEM Summit, which brings an array of compelling speakers, in this particular case, to Brooklyn. That's where our school is located. Um, our WOM wo mentorship program matches women sophomores and juniors with their older counterparts in order to build a sense of community. We have developed a diversity-focused curriculum. We have different classes like science and difference, science and feminism, and um, many of our faculty members are actively involved in supporting and met mentoring our female students. And then the final step is having our alumni to, to stay involved. So we have established, for example, an alumni advisory council whose members support the advancement of women students by serving as mentors and providing job shadowing and internship opportunities and speaking at events. We celebrate the success of many women in our history who have paved the way for those of us who came later. Uh, one is Anna Erdman, who in 1907 became the first woman ever to earn a degree from our school. To Ursula Burns, uh, many of you have heard about her, who in 2009 became the first African-American woman ever to helm a Fortune 500 company and to many, many others. We had, among other, uh, we had a woman who was the first engineering dean in the United States and so on. And we all know that STEM fields are the fastest growing sector of our economy and we know that there are more jobs being created than people currently prepared um, and able to take them. If you take cybersecurity, numbers vary, but the latest one I heard is that by the end of just 2021, there will be 3.5 million unfilled cybersecurity jobs in the world. So we need to, to educate more cybersecurity efforts, and we are very proud to be doing just that. I think that we are all clear, and you have seen this in some other panels I looked through the program, that you know, our systems need protecting and people are needed to take on those jobs. Uh, we need people to prevent deep fakes and other breaches caused through machine learning hacks. Uh, we, our elections are under attack from false political advertising um, to the actual ballot box. We need more professionals addressing those threats to our democracy and we all agree that this is an important problem. Uh, we need to protect the autonomous vehicles um, ha from hack hacking car security systems. So security is, or, and, and cyber security is one of the major concerns in today's world. So at Tendon, we not only tackle software and network security, but we also focus on hardware security, protecting the integrity of the supply chain, securing additive manufacturing, and so, so on. 
from CISO to our joint degree programs to cyber risk, uh, in cyber risk with the New York uh, the NYU Law School, from our partnership with uh, New York City Cyber Command to the crea creation of an affordable elite online masters in cybersecurity called Cyber Fellows. We have been ready and are training everyone who, anyone who has a background in STEM. But even if you don't have a background in STEM, and I heard this before on a panel, we have a program called Bridge to Tandon that will take people who have a bachelor's in a non-STEM uh, in a non-STEM field, and through a three to four month intensive online program for only eighteen hundred dollars, you are then able to take our masters, let's say, in computer science or cybersecurity. So building an effective pipeline takes a lot of hard work and dedication. We know all this. And, and you can't rest. You can't say we got this 46% and now we are done. We are not because the moment you rest, the numbers start, you know, keep on falling. And building the culture, as you know, is the hardest thing to do. It takes a lot of time to, and, and effort to build. It takes very little time to destroy. So we all have to keep on doing it. Uh, we have, as I said, we have some metrics to prove that we are on the right path, but we never think that we are done. And we really won't be satisfied until there is a fair representation in the workforce, not only of women, women but all underrepresented minorities in STEM. So again, it, it has been a real great honor and uh, pleasure to be here. I'm always excited when I come into a room full of amazing women. And I just want to ask men in the audience to think about how some of us feel when we go to a room full of men. So I hope you are holding strong there. Thank you very much. <laughs>